My name is Scott. I, um, I was in the Marine Corps from uh, 93 uh, to 99, and then I re-enlisted when the war broke out and spent, uh, um, re-enlisted in 04 and went through 07. You know, I left my, my, my two kids behind when I went over, right? And um, they, were, they were 15 and 12 when I came over. And for me, it was really hard because within the first few days, you know, we were attacked a bunch of times. And, you know, we had a few RPGs shot our helicopter flying into Fallujah before we even hit the ground. And I had a lot of guilt, a lot of guilt. You know, I kind of thought, I'm not coming home. You know, I, here I am, selfish dad, going off to play, you know, like a little kid and be war hero. This stuff is no joke, and now I'm not going home. I couldn't let that affect me, because ultimately what was important was the Marine on my left, the Marine on my right. And that's what I need to remember. And that's why when I say I flipped the switch, that's what I did. They were now my family. You know, I had a family back home, but this was now my family. The few, first few months I, after I came home, it was nice. It was fun. You know, everybody comes up and it's like, "Hey, nice to be home." You know, good. You know, good job. Whatever. How was it? You know, blah blah. blah. And you're like this big war hero. And then after everybody's done that to you, everybody's come up and you know, you've said it to me. You don't say it again. So once once I've you know went through that group of people, it's like all of a sudden now I'm just every other guy on the street. You know, and that's when things started to really kind of hit me. The home life wasn't too bad. I mean, my kids understood, you know, it was kind of okay. My youngest one would kind of laugh about it. She was real proud. You know, she was real like, you know, my daddy, my daddy, you know, and, and they would laugh about it because the way I would drive when I came home and stuff. But, you know, and then, and then I think as time went on, they started to see the, the, the nasty side of it. You know, I'd come home and I, I didn't have a lot of patience. I still have a lot of patience for people. And they would see that side of it. And they would see me, you know, why didn't you do this? There was no, like, um, middle ground. It was just like zero to 100, yelling, mad, upset, couldn't handle it. And the hard part for me was the whole time I'm doing this, I knew in my, inside it was wrong, but I couldn't stop it. And I think that was the big thing for them that maybe affected them. Where I really started to feel it was when I went back to work, you know, and I noticed um, going back to work for me was really, really hard. I felt like people were looking at me like I was strange, like something was off. And I don't know if it was something personal that was going on inside of me, um, but I just started to feel really isolated. And, you know, some of the counselors have told me that was probably my own, you know, kind of like feeling that way. It was something was going on inside of me. People usually don't just look at people like that. And so I kind of isolated myself at work. I'd go in really early, I'd sit in the dark, do my work, and leave. You know, I'd have a lot of social interaction at work. Um, there was times I would just leave work and I would walk down the middle of our, you know, corridor thing and, uh, you know, I would just, people would be walking at me and I'd walk right down the middle and I'd just think to myself, don't hit me, don't touch me. If you touch me, I'm putting you down. You know, and I tried to adapt and I tried to kind of function as a normal person, but you know, there's not a day that goes by that I don't crave that normalcy that I had one at one time, you know, because I don't have it anymore. Since I've been back, I've, um, I've acquired like a, like kind of like a compulsiveness. I never had any of this before I went to Iraq. It's all, I believe it's all direct result of something that can happen when I came back. I would get up and check the doors multiple times. You know, I mean, I would go physically unlock the door, lock it, and be like, okay, it's locked. Go upstairs, go back down. Did I check it? And go down and check it again. And I did that a, a, a lot. I would try to sleep, but I just never could get to sleep. Any noises would wake me up, you know, and then the nightmares came. And I kind of was like, if I go to sleep, I'm gonna have this nightmare. And I had a lot of reoccurring nightmares, you know, and that's when Josh finally called me a few months after we got back, and he finally got a hold of me. And he kind of talked to me a little bit about it and said, hey, we gotta get you in. And so that's when, you know, he kind of hand walked me into the VA and just started the process. I mean, I knew the VA existed. I just didn't know exactly what they had to offer me. So when Josh called me, he's like, hey, we gotta get you down there, blah, blah, blah. We have this thing called a case manager, combat case manager. You know, she's really nice, you know, I'll call her so on and so forth. So um, within a, a couple hours, I believe, or maybe it was the next day, I had a phone call from his case manager and she said, come in as soon as you can. They got me enrolled in the system, which is a process, you know, get you enrolled in the, in the healthcare system. And then she kind of screened me. And she said, you know, she was like, I believe you're, um, you're suffering from depression, PTSD, anxiety, you know, everything goes along with it. She said, you know, that, that uh, people with PTSD kind of operate, you know, you get a, that scale from uh, zero to 10. And, you know, the normal person might operate at a zero or a one. You know, they might get a little angry and it goes up to a three or a four, but then it just kind of goes away. To where people with PTSD or PTS, you know, they operate at that seven, eight level. 
you know, so when they get something happens, they go to a 10, like instantly, and it's rage. And it, that was a pretty good analogy of me. I mean, it's like, I can feel very calm, but there's no in between. If you don't feel normal, and you feel like you're starting to isolate yourself, because I think that's one of the big things, then you need to go, you need to go down to the VA or a vet center or find an or a veteran organization, seek help, and at least talk to somebody to find out you know, what it is you're going through because you're not alone.